welcome back to Watch Is Live, our only show right here on this channel, Watchbox Reviews. Thank you for joining in. I have a full house tonight. Complications, simple watches, sports watches, dress watches. And I want to remind you that we are still working on our next giveaway watch. So I would love to know in the comments below this video what you would love to win. Quick wrist check, you guys know me, Zin Easy M11. If this watch is new to you, welcome to the channel. You're new to the channel. 43 millimeters, tegmented stainless steel, central register chronograph. It's a lefty, and yes, the timepiece is very, very German. Straight out of Frankfurt. All right, let's talk about the most shocking Rolex ever made. Now, if you recall the 2013 Christie's Daytona Lesson 1 auction, the shock wasn't the historic pieces that pulled in money. The shock was that the famed abomination Shall we say, Mardi Gras float for your wrist? Shall we say, the most daring Rolex of all time? I don't know, it's a controversial piece. The controversial piece is the 116598 SACO, and this watch went for over retail back in 2013. Now, the Daytona is the watch that's given out at the 24 Hours of Daytona for the winner of the endurance sports car race in each car in each class in January each year. Now, if for example, the race were contested entirely by Mardi Gras floats, let's stick with that theme, driven by Elvis impersonators, this would be the winner's gift. This watch is beyond controversial. You can see it's got a symmetrically double-sided leopard spot dial with black lacquer spots, eight diamonds on the dial, 36 orange baguette sapphires on the bezel, and note the invisible setting with no pincer clasping visible, and 48 diamonds set in the low on each side. The strap, oh yeah, it continues. The strap is also a bilaterally symmetrical, glossy, calfskin, leopard spotted affair. Just about the only conventional part of this watch is the yellow gold clasp. Now, this watch came out at Basel World 2004. It was controversial even then. A watch that you love or hate, and I'll be honest, most folks are not going to be on the love side of the fence. This is a very particular, very particular taste. If you own a Lamborghini Aventador Cabriolet, and the whole thing is sitting in a hot pink wrap, this might be your watch. Now, this is a timepiece that is awe-inspiring. It's one of the few truly handmade Rolex watches of the modern era. But my goodness, do you have to have that taste for this watch? And I should have warned you to turn down the brightness of your monitor before flashing this much shine in your face. This is the legendary SACO. Technically a yellow gold Rolex Daytona 40 millimeters. This is about as extravagant as it gets in the post-Liberace era. I have to say between Las Vegas era Elvis and Liberace. I'm not sure who the ideal customer for this watch is, but my God, if you've got the panache to pull this thing off and you buy it, send me a wrist shot. Like, wow. That is one hell of a Rolex watch. And look, I'm gonna give Rolex credit for making this because that took a lot of nerve, just as it takes a lot of nerve to wear this. And again, if you have the 1000 watt personality to pull this off, I'm a few watts short. You might be flush. Send me a wrist shot. Monday mailbag at thewatchbox.com. Let's see who is in the box right now. We've got Eric Nielsen right here. We've got Thomas Burnett. We've got Captain Zed. We've got Edward Ledden saying, I would totally wear that. Please don't kill me though. No, I'm glad to hear someone chime in for that watch because it's just overwhelming. It's a very special piece and the first one I've seen in half a decade of doing this. Right here, we've got Watch Doctor saying, the million dollar man from the WWF would wear that watch. And we've got King and good day from sunny Ohio. Tell me, do we have any Alangu and Zona pieces on the table today? Yes, we do. We have a Zeitwerk striking, and I'm saving that one. Let's jump straight into a watch I think everyone will enjoy. Far less divisive. It's one hell of a device. The Legacy Machine 101, launched by MBNF in 2014. It was a collaboration with Max Booser's friend, Kerry Voodelainen. The basic idea was, let's create an MBNF watch if MBNF had existed in the era of Jules Verne. And that's exactly what we have here. 40 millimeters in red gold. We have a full black polished balance bridge with a cantilevered 14 plus millimeter balance. An enormous balance beaten away at 18,000. You can see that it is actually an aerodynamic and free sprung architecture with a handmade brigade overcoil. Look how far above the dial it sits under an incredible domed 
named Lofty Sapphire, you won't see a loftier sapphire this side of a quorum bubble. You can also see, by the way, Philadelphia's finest outside protecting us. We are in a city. You can see that there's a separate bridge for the lever and the blue to escape wheel. So all of the action is on the dial side of the watch. There's a sunburst graining to the silver dial base. And then you can see that both of the sub registers are enamel with rose gold chapterings, power reserve and the time. How graceful is this? 47.6 millimeters lug to lug with shaped lugs that handsomely arc around the wrist. It's like wearing a bubble on your wrist or a little biosphere. The timepiece is truly anachronistic in the fashion of the legacy machines and yet up to the minute in its standards of fit, finish, and materials. Turn it over and you see more of the Cary Voodelain and influence. Like a pocket watch, a traditional center wheel architecture with a deeply crested Cote de Genève that have a lovely gradient. You can see that gradient as I move it through the light side to side. Sunburst graining on the ratchet wheel as well as the crown wheel. Black polish on every screw head. And then you can see there's a mirrored chamfer on the edge of every bridge. The jewels for the train, the center wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel. You can see they're all set in golden chaton as with pocket watches and all screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots. A truly beautiful watch in the traditional sense. There is nothing traditional about the style. And I just cannot get over the length of that balance staff that allows the balance to sit so far above the dial. Turn it over one more time so you can see the escapement, the escape wheel and the lever from their, uh, I would say, 11 o'clock aspect. This is an incredible timepiece. And look at the case design. Look how stepped out the lugs are. Look at the contrast between the vertical satin finish of the lugs and the horizontal satin finish of the case. Perfect. All right, jumping into the box right here, Jeff Mendelson saying, with the Rolex Daytona, simply too much candy. That's Bod saying, I'm glad it exists, but not for me. And then right here, we've got Mason One, Dustin Van Patten, who's a fan of the MBNF. We've got right here High and Rising saying, I wouldn't wear the Rolex, but I'd wear that MBNF. That MBNF has to be the, the least controversial watch on the table. We can all come back together after our great schism over the Rolex, put our mi medieval scholasticism behind us. We can all come back together in a reformation around the MBNF. Right here, JBO Surf joining in from Adelaide, Australia. Dan Soul asking, What happened to Concord? Honestly, it was a brand that had its moment. I, I want to say it was Manuel Emk who was with them, and I, I think he was the guy who was with them, who drove the brand hard for a few years, but after the C1, they lost their momentum. And then right here, we have Brick Lane responding, just as much, Concord is dead. Pretty much. Okay, I had a comment from Don Rogan, who is a viewer. He wanted to see the F. Pigeon Tourbillon Souverain 40 millimeters in red gold. I hope I picked the right watch, but Don, this one's for you. F. Pigeon's second generation Tourbillon. This is the timepiece that features a constant force device that doubles as a deadbeat second mechanism, a free sprung one minute Tourbillon with overcoil, and a filigree style black polished. You can really see that black polish, the mirrored finish on the wire style cage, a one minute tourbillon with three bolts, all of them black polished, a black polished bezel around the torb, the seconds, the hours, and the minutes, 42 hour power reserve scale up at 12 o'clock, turn it all over, solid 18 karat rose gold caliber, 1403. You could see a pocket watch style extended click and click spring. You could see satin graining on the ratchet and crown wheel, black polish all over the Raymontoire constant force mechanism. You could see it jumping in one second increments. That straight titanium blade is the Raymontoire, and it impulses the escapement by giving it one second's worth of power each second, acting as a buffer between the mainspring and the ultimate escapement on the tourbillon. The reason for that is the mainspring will be flush when fully wound, and its torque will be weak when it's mostly discharged. So the Remontoire is a buffer power reserve of one second's duration that ensures only one second of equal power reaches the tourbillon. Therefore, the extent of the mainspring barrel's energy, too much or too little, doesn't affect the amplitude of the balance, and it will maintain constant amplitude right down to 12 hours remaining of power reserve, at which point the deadbeat second system and the Raymontoire deactivate to keep the watch running. So keep this one wound, and you have one of the finest time tellers in the world. 
40 millimeters, 10 millimeters thick, 48 millimeters lug to lug. You can see it's far less domed than the MBNF. This one sits flush to the wrist, 10 millimeters even, but it looks even flatter. It's a graceful arcing lug profile, very traditional and yet very progressive. The timepiece with a rose gold dial over a rose gold movement in a rose gold watch, all of them precious metal, one hell of a timekeeper. Jumping into the box right here, I can see we've got a lot of friends already. 175 is our live audience right now. Keep it going. JBO Surf saying, Jorn Cases are Perfection, Barry BKT, Incredible Piece, Beauty, and then Edward Ledden, FP Jorn Torbjorn, Black Label is the best though. His holy grail of grails. Well, let's jump into a very different type of watch. Simple can be beautiful, and when it's a 34 millimeter Rolex case, you have two different flavors to choose. Both reference 114200. You have in my right hand the 2015 Oyster Perpetual 34, olive green sunburst dial with orange accents, domed bezel profile, and then you have the Air King 34 that preceded the Thunderbird style or the Bloodhound, I should say, style dial. This was the Air King in traditional size, 34 millimeters, also reference 114200. You can see it has an Explorer style dial with tri Arabics, stick style indices, all white gold. The watches are mechanically in profile and on the wrist identical. 34 millimeters in an oyster case, where it's more like a conventional round case 36, which is why I actually think this is a unisex size. I'm going to throw it on my wrist. 16 centimeters circumference and give you a sense of how this one wears. Now this is a three-hand watch that's fully loomed, 100 meters water resistant, a certified chronometer, highly anti-magnetic. Take a look at that case. Because the Oyster is traditionally a cushion profile, it wears larger. I'd have no objections to wearing this as my daily. I'll also mention to you that the watch at 11.6 will sit underneath the cuff and with the domed bezel, this watch is the closest living relative in the current collection to the original 1930s 40s and 50s Rolex bubble backs, the watches that first combined the perpetual automatic winding system with the Oyster water resistant case. So this is core Rolex right here. This is not a peripheral model. This predates the Datejust, the Sub, the GMT, the Daytona, all of them. The father of them all, arguably the first sports watch and still going strong as the Oyster Perp. All right, let's talk about something that combines Two words I would never ordinary pair, ordinarily pair together, discretion and Panerai. But sure enough, all of us were shocked when Panerai, two years ago at SIHH, debuted the PAM 682, the first ever 42 millimeter rotating bezel Panerai submersible dive watch. It's lovely and it's not as big as it looks, wearing about the size of a Rolex Submariner on the wrist. It's got the classic Luminor profile with the locking lever device protecting the crown, 300 meters water resistant caliber 9010 three day automatic manufacture movement. The bezel has some of the best ratcheting detent sound you will ever hear. Let me throw this one up against the mic and let it speak for itself. Best in the business, bezel feel and ratchet sound. Sharp, vocal, and I have to say, on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see how this wears. Easily accommodated. And of course, it has the traditional Panerai upscale quick release system rather than the spring bars, unfortunately used in many contemporary Panerai watches. This one was a no expense spared 42, a Panerai Luminor for the rest of us who simply can't pull off the 44, 47, or have no desire to because it's not our style. The locking lever, present and correct, better than ever with a runner bearing inside the cam lobe. That locks the crown, 300 meters water resistant, that unlocks the crown. If you've never seen this device, this is what Panerai is all about, and it's a Luminor submersible in a 1950 case, which means it has the more graceful reference 6152 inspired case that debuted first in 2002 in the civilian Panerai world on the original 1950, the 127, going strong now at 42 millimeters in a diver. Right here in the box, the FET fan saying, I see we have some Star Wars fans here. The Fett fan saying that the Panerai, that's my choice right there. And then I see Ryan Carl saying, I think it's a great watch for large wrists, much different from the Sub or the Milgauss in terms of fit, preferred to the 36 or the 39. I think we're talking about the 34 millimeter Rolexes right there. 
And then we have Captain Zed saying, I love the submersible. And then Richard K, I really love that panorama. I think the size here is what seals it. 42 for a lot of folks is the upper limit to wear a watch that doesn't feel like a novelty. And Panerai nailed it with the 682 and the 684 in rose gold. Now this is a watch that represents the dawn of the annual calendar. Patek Philippe 5035J-011, 37 millimeters in traditional yellow gold, concave bezel, integrated Calatrava style lugs. You can see this is a punchy watch with a black dial yellow gold combo like the original 1998 5070s. Now this watch does have an original tritium dial. The hands are Luminova replacements, but it is an original tritium Roman numeral dial, so fully intact. And I should mention, can we get real close to this dial as close as you can get? This one features an exquisite gilt style golden print Italian language calendar. So a special watch. And again, 1996, this watch came out. It was the first annual calendar ever, an original invention of Patek Philippe. This watch is so old school Patek, it even features the precious metal hallmarks in the flanks of the case rather than under the lugs. Turn it all over, Patek Manufacture Movement 315. It is a QA, it is a 24H because it features a 24 hour subdial to let you know whether you're looking at AM or PM. As you can see, you're looking at the middle of the night right here because we're well into the second half of the 24 hour cycle. A gorgeous watch with tons of punch. You don't need a big watch to make a big statement. This one has the impeccable pedigree, finishing, and Patek Philippe house innovation to stand out even at 37 millimeters. I actually prefer it in that size. Jumping into the box right here, I've got Alexi from Finland joining back, Edward Ledden of Sweden, JBO Surf of Adelaide, Australia. We have a lot of friends here. And Ryan Carl saying, I like the diminished legibility of the day month function in the 5035. Allows reading the date and the time to remain straightforward despite a busy dial. It's true, it is sort of a subdued set of pointer registers. And then right here we have Dustin Van Patten saying, Grand Seiko and Rolex, the only brand still in making 34 to 37 millimeter watches for men. Don't forget about Nomos. They still do traditional sizes. All right, jumping into Grand Seiko because you mentioned it first. Let's take a look at a lovely high beat GMT in the legendary 44 GS polyhedron case. Now this is a watch 40 millimeters. It's the post 2017 Grand Seiko dial. If you look carefully, you can see it has an embossed white pinstriping that runs top to bottom. Take a close look here because you can see what sets Grand Seiko watches apart. The dial quality, fire blued steel 24 hour hand, all of the indices as you can see, along with the Dauphine hands at center, are black polished, executed by artisans who just create these parts all day long on diamond tipped milling tools. Grand Seiko dial quality matches and surpasses Rolex. Note the use of color, blue hand, blue GMT script, and then the 24 hour flange for the second time zone has subtle blue printing. The watch is 40 millimeters, and let me show you what I talk about whenever I mention the finish of Grand Seiko cases. The Zeratsu finish, a Zalitz machine originally invented in Germany, a tin plate that spins and black polishes the case. It's a craft art that is now practiced principally in Japan by Grand Seiko artisans. You could see, this is not Rolex polish, this is not Omega polish, this is like a mirror. And you could see that it is micrometrically identical, these facets, almost like the compound eye of a fly, and no error, no asymmetry, all of it executed by feel, by eye and by experience. The case design, the 44GS, first created in 1967 and one of the few truly distinctive Grand Seiko styles to have weathered the decades as a constant. 46 millimeters lug to lug and look at the concave rounded profile underneath the thin satin finished mid case. This is a work of art that you can wear. A hand finished watch that costs less than $10,000. Manufacture movement on the inside, 9S86, six position adjust regulated beyond chronometer standards and all of this 100 meters water resistant so it is a sports watch and you can see how that 46.5 millimeter lug to lug wears a treat on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist feather light in grade 5 titanium with matching bracelet I recommend this watch to just about anyone man or woman whether you want a sports watch or a dress watch this is a great all-arounder Boom, and then right here we have a question. Let me jump back because this box is moving fast. We have Andre 
asking, Tim, what do you think of the Debatun Ervirk Moon Satellite that is coming out for Only Watch 2019? I love both brands. Good people run both brands. Innovative people run both brands. I'll be honest, though, I like the work of Ervirk by itself and Debatun by itself more than I like the fusion of the two. What I'm really looking forward to is the new Time Aeon Foundation watch that's going to combine a Grubel 4C sensibility with independent watchmaking innovation and Ervirk support. That's going to be one to watch, the next Time Aeon Foundation watch. Speaking of Debatun, let's talk about one of their high watermarks when they won the Aguidor, or the grand prize of watchmaking, effectively like winning Best Picture or Best Director at the Oscars. Back in 2011, the DB28 won, and in response, 50 of these were made to celebrate. This is the DB28 Aguidor limited edition of 50 pieces. All of it, black polished titanium inside and out. You can see how exquisitely finished the movement itself is. Now let me remove some of these fingerprints because it seems downright indecent to show you one of the most beautifully rendered watches obscured by my finger oils. Now the dial features twin mainspring barrels, a delta style bridge for the barrels that is black polished on its center. You could see, if you look carefully, I'm going to try to catch the light correctly but the minute hand is polished and then there is a rose gold insert within the minute hand symbolizing the golden hand or the golden needle the agido the name of the grand prize so you could see that rose gold insert within the minute hand a full balance bridge specular finished fully rounded triple shock protection triple parachute they call it shock protection shock protection shock protection the balance featuring a solid disc of silicon with a white gold rim and an off-centered proprietary hairspring. They make the shock protection, they make the balance, they make the hairspring, they even make the silicon unlubricated escape wheel. All of that's in-house. The lugs are spring-loaded variable geometry. The watch is 42.7 millimeters, but look at how the lugs jump from 58 down to 53 millimeters across the wrist. And it's a bullhead winder. Take a look right there. Throw it on my wrist. There are actually two different sizes of lugs. The large lug which is 53 to 58, and the small lug, which is 47 to 51. You can have the watch retrofitted at the factory, big to small, and vice versa. It's an easy watch to wear, all in titanium. It's feather light. Now, if you look on the dial side, you can see there's also a hidden power reserve needle that indicates how much of the six-day power reserve manually wound is still intact. Turn it all over, and you can see the entire mechanism, as well as a more intuitive scale for the power reserve. Now, here we're moving away from black polish. We have satin finish on the wheel on the lever and an engine turned perlage all over the plates and the bridges. This is exceptional stuff, folks, and this is from a brand that makes 150 watches a year. The 50 units of this edition spread over several model years. A 360 degree moon phase down at 6 o'clock with an accuracy of 122 years. I'm going to show you another view of that moon phase on my personal Grail watch. This is the only Grail watch that I still consider my Grail. Debatun DB28 Digital, a model from 2014. It is a jump hour, 45 millimeters in grade 5 tide. This one's on the long lugs. I would have mine on the short lugs, but it does wear a treat even in that size. You have a guilloche dial with a lovely grandoge or barley corn. You have a black polished, blued steel 360 degree moon phase, and then when it turns over, the other side is white palladium. So it's a sphere, one half is blue, one half is white, blued titanium with little yellow gold cabochon inserts all around, and then you have the cosmos arcing over in blued titanium, fire blued titanium, atop a scrolling minutes display just on top of the jump hour. Now I'm going to show you how the jump hour works, because the jump hour is part of the fun of this most dynamic of time displays. The watch itself jumping to 10 naturally and now I'm going to manipulate things and show you how the jump occurs when you play with the watch because playing with a watch like this is literally 99.9% .9 of the fun. That and showing your friends. This is a wonderful gateway watch because your friends who are not into watches will immediately understand why this is fun and cool and they need to get into the hobby, even if they're not playing in this price point. Now, the watch also features a caliber 2114. Manufacture movement on the reverse side. It has a literal Cote de Genève across the 
the bridge for the barrels, but you'll also note that there's a black polished and blued titanium bridge over the top that extends at the bottom to the triple shock protection, and here, the specular finished bridge has been blued. That solid disc of silicon, by the way, thermally resistant, anti-magnetic, and giving you a wonderfully huge moment of inertia with all of the mass in the ring of white gold on the outside of the balance. This is as good as it gets, guys, and once again, my grail watch, take a look. Is it too big? You know what? I don't care. I want this watch. And I'm happy to be part of the effort to launch DB, or I should say relaunch the brand in the U.S. So this is a brand with which I have to say I'm both infatuated and emotionally invested. All right. One hell of a watch right there, guys. Jumping into the box right here, we've got... We've got Lee Jamil joining in from Sydney, Australia. Very cool. Hi, Lee. Thanks for joining us. And right here, we've got Selton Fogg asking, what makes the... Rolex sub more robust than the Patek 324 SC easy. A few things. First, the Rolex movement is just thicker. Thicker movements are built more sturdily. They're more shock resistant. You're less likely to get two wheels out of alignment where they're chattering and barely interlocking or not interlocking at all. The, the pivots for the wheels can be a little bit bigger. The bridges can be a bit tougher. And the full balance bridge on the Rolex gives it a shock resistance that the half bridge on a 324 Patek does not have. So basically, it's, it's thicker and it has a full balance bridge, but there are more refinements than that. Right here, right here, bump, 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 bump. We've got all sorts of friends. We've got Kanaka M joining in from Hawaii. Wow, we don't get too many visitors and too many viewers from Hawaii. Welcome, guys. True Lies saying the 44 GS Grand Seiko is my favorite case design. Thomas Burnett saying GS does some great dials. And then right here, we have... A question from Mimi, Aquaterra GMT, not on the table tonight, but I highly recommend it. I would say if you're going to get one, get the Aquaterra GMT Good Planet, because 43 millimeters, it does help to have it in grade 5 tie rather than steel. It sits a little bit lighter on the wrist. That was a 2016 special series, but not a limited series. That would be my Aquaterra GMT recommendation. We have... Uh, Joe R. joining in. We've got Ahmed Hamam saying, why does the Aquaterra get no love? You know why? Because it's sandwiched between the true diving Seamasters and the Moonwatches. Between the Speedmasters and the true diveable Seamasters, people don't know how to process the surf turf Aquaterra. But I will say this, the Aquaterra, specifically the calendar models, the annual calendar and the day date, a lot more popular in East Asia. So hopefully that rising tide lifts all boats and a little bit of that Asian watch culture comes back to the West because the Aquaterra might be the best all-around watch that Omega makes. And then right here we've got Often Leaked asking, what do you think about the tribute to Millspec? I like it. I don't think it's the watch for me. I think it's a good effort. I think it's one of the best modern 50 Fathoms. I think the 1150 caliber is just a little bit too fragile for a sports watch. And though it's beautifully made, I prefer the standard 45 millimeter 50 Fathoms or the 43 millimeter Bathyscaphe with the caliber 1315. It's tougher, it's longer legged. And to me, a full fledged modern 50 Fathoms is a rich, almost decadent piece of luxury opulence on your wrist, uh, a coruscating statement of virtuosity and watch finish. For me, that's what a 50 Fathoms is today, whereas the tribute to Millspec is a bit more of a throwback to, well, the Millspec days. So it's an honest watch, a good watch, it's just not a watch for me. All right, jumping into a timepiece that is polarizing but lovable. This is the original IWC Da Vinci Perpetual Calendar, reference 3750-0639 millimeters in white gold, the hinge lug system designed by Hanno Bircher, and you can see that the watch, to clear all of the hands on its dial, features a dive watch style plexiglass. The watch came out at Basel 1985, and it features an aventurine moon phase disc that absolutely scintillates, sparkling in the light, with an effervescent grace and energy, almost an animus of its own. The perpetual calendar system designed by Kurt Klaus, uh, an IWC watchmaker, Kurt Klaus, designing the system to be programmed and easily adjustable, such, let's just make sure we're out of the danger zone, by the way. See, it's good we did that. It's mechanically programmed, so all you need to do is adjust the date and everything else moves in sync. So adjusting this perpetual calendar, because it's mechanically programmed, is as easy as adjusting your Rolex date just. So you've got the programmed IWC manufacturer perpetual calendar, the sharpest in the business, it's alongside Ludwig Oxlund's UN calendar. You've got an adventuring moon face. You've got a chronograph. Well, you've got a chronograph if I wind the watch.
you've got a white gold case of traditional proportions, automatic winding. This is the caliber 79261 built on top of a Valshu 7750, making it one of the most exquisitely modified V7750s ever. And with those hinge lugs, which by the way are double hinged, not single hinged, you can wear it on any wrist. This is a connoisseur's watch. It's a polarizing watch. It's not polarizing the way the Rolex was at the beginning of the show. This is more of a watch nerd watch rather than a dandy's watch. And that's how I describe it. It's a watch nerd watch. It's also the inspiration for the 2017 to current IWC Da Vinci family. I can see Hale Bopp, one of our friends and clients, saying, beautiful IWC, but it wears too small for me. We have on the table Geezer saying, Patek Philippe 5127 Calatrava versus 5107. I like the 5107 for a specific reason. It has a very flat bezel that, to my eye, makes it look like a more, I, I would say, handsomely proportioned watch. It appears flatter than the 5127, and I prefer the 5107 for that reason. Now let's talk about a modern Patek Philippe watch. Up to the minute, bleeding edge, current gen, perpetual calendar chronograph. This is the 2013 to 2015 Patek Philippe 5270G013. You can see this is a first generation chin chronograph with the little interference of the date and the tachymeter scale with the seconds track, you will note that this is a perpetual calendar. You've got a day-night indicator, leap year phase indicator, you've got your date, you've got your day, you've got your month, you've got white gold indices, all of it in a 41 millimeter case with exquisitely rendered lugs and a lovely step about the mid case that transitions to the conical bezel. Look at the complexity of the bezel. It has a vertical segment, moving inboard there's a conical segment, and then abutting the crystal, there's another vertical segment, and that's just the crystal. Turn it over. Manufacture movement. Caliber CH29535. This watch is a perpetual calendar, a manual wind, a 65-hour power reserve, one of the few modern Patek Philippe movements that features hacking seconds, Six position adjusted, Breguet overcoil, no silicon on the flagship watches. You could see there is a lovely instantaneous jumping minute second with a rack and a snail. It's a little miniature pole under the minute jumper bridge that instantaneously jumps the minutes for the chronograph. I'll make sure we get back to that before it jumps. You could see the black polished cap on the column wheel, and you could see that the lateral yoke is easy to watch. By the way, fully jeweled, no bushings in this lateral yoke. This is why you want a traditional manual wind lateral clutch, cr clutch chronograph, not the latest in terms of tech, but easily the most beautiful in terms of keeping no secrets and showing you everything for which you have paid. Now we're about to watch the instantaneous jump of the minute jumper system, so keep your eye on that. Look at the spring for the yoke. Look at that ex extensive, expansive spring system. By the way, here comes the jump, guys. Five. For, there it is, right there. Instantaneous min minute jumper. Look at the yoke spring for that yoke system. That is gorgeous. Now throw it on the wrist. 41 millimeters, big by Patek standards, but by perpetual calendar chrono standards, not bad. Wearable even on a small wrist. The silver dial is very versatile. I happen to be a partisan of the blue dial and later on the salmon dial with the platinum case, but this is a very wearable and versatile watch, and it's probably the most broadly pleasing of the 5270s in terms of the tastes to which it caters. In the box right here, we have Joe asking, any perpetual calendars under $5,000? You would probably have to find a 2017 to present, no, 2016 to present, steel Frédéric Constant perpetual calendar. So if you could find their manufacturer perpetual, the steel model made from 2016 to present pre-owned, that would be your best bet for finding perpetual under 5k. I don't know if you'll quite pull it off, but you will find many annuals for less than five grand. Okay, let's talk about that which we haven't discussed yet. Breguet, high horology, undoubtedly high horology, but it's a brand we don't talk about much because the brand is poorly marketed and I don't get many requests for Breguet watches here on the channel. That needs to change. Right here, La Tradition GMT, 40 millimeters. This is a Basel 2012 release 
reference 7067 BR in rose gold. Look at the grace of that dial. Look at the frosted bridges and plates. Now there is mirrored anglage, there are black polished screws, but the finish is unique to Breguet because they use a pocket watch aesthetic here. The frosting, you can see that splayed spoke design like a vintage pocket watch, even on the train wheels. The style is 18th century, 19th century from the time of the master himself. You can see an overcoil, one of his innovations, underneath a parachute shock protection system. Not only is this Breguet's own shock protection system from back in the day on his pocket watches, but it inspired the triple parachute shock protection system on the Debatun watches. And you can see the triple parachute system visibly related to the system invented by the master. Now let's talk about some of the details here. You have a guilloche, real rose lathe guilloche cut solid gold primary dial. That solid gold primary dial is then silvered to create an elegant and traditional look. The Breguet hands are fired blue, not dyed, and you can see how the GMT system works. There's even a visible trigger lever arm on the side. That is how you set the main time zone independently. Now when you pull the crown, you can see that there is a modern aerodynamic recessed bolt balance right there. And now you can adjust everything in sync. You've got a day-night indicator that's synced to the reference time, so you know whether you're looking at AM or PM, for example. Turn it all over and you have a power reserve system, a power reserve indicator for this caliber 507 DRF and you can see the mechanism as well, a lovely freehand engraved main plate. This is as good as watchmaking gets from a brand that is one of the best pre-owned buys. They're a mess new right now. The resale is terrible, I'm not going to lie to you. Buy this watch used, but you're getting as good as Patek, as Longa, as Vacheron and as many independents. Plus check out the dial side barrel that's sitting centrally oriented under the entire assembly. Everything laid bare so you can see it on your wrist without removal. Let's say you want to spend less money. Let's say you want something a bit sportier. And let's say you want more exclusivity than Breguet, which makes thousands, tens of thousands of watches a year. What about a brand that only makes 600 pieces a year? Closer in FP Journe, I have to say, closer to FP Journe than anything else on the table. Well, Linda Verdlin, Danish design, Swiss manufacturer. This is the one Hard Black 3. The Hard Black 3 44 millimeter case can dock with their Land Sports Rock computer or their Water Sports Reef computer. This one, 300 meters water resistant with rotating bezel as a backup dive timer, is fully equipped to mate with their reef dive timer, which has backlights, alarms, depth logging and data recording, multiple dive timers, multiple depth gauges, and multifunction compatibility with not just the watch, and here's how it works. You can see that there is a, a wing system on each side into which the computer locks, but it can also hook up to your PC, your tablet, or your phone. Now the watch itself is mechanical. It uses an ETA 2896 Big Date system. This is the Hard Black 3 Big Date. You can see the dial fully loomed and highly stylized with an embossed sector style pattern. Let me pull the crown out here, and now you could see the big date system hiding underneath the minute hand right there. This is a wonderful way to get a Royal Oak Offshore style watch or a Big Bang style watch for a lot less money with a lot more exclusivity. With an ETA ticker inside, it is tank tough and reliable, infinitely serviceable as a boutique brand. And you can see that the case is almost lugless, making it easy to wear. You'll also note on the reverse side, only 99 pieces. So you're not gonna see another one. The fit of the strap, which I believe is a cut rather than molded, strap is incredible and very comfortable and you can see the bolts in the top of the lugs which make it super easy to disassemble this modular watch and fit the universe of straps in every hide and synthetic that you can buy on the Linda Verdelin website and I have to mention Jorn Verdelin the founder of the brand and the owner actually came on my show back when we were watch you want and I will be forever grateful to this brand for taking a chance on a guy who was in the pre-owned boondocks back in the day they're progressive in more ways than one. And then right here we have whew, lots of you guys, over 300. Stay on guys, stick with me. It'll be worth the, the, the big finish, I promise you. A crescendo. Right here we've got fun guys named Crappy Luxury, Tom Austin, WC, Blue Shirt, Buddha, Andrew, Geezer, Offenlicht. And then I can see right here we have Often looked saying that vaguely reminds me of AP concept watches. I think he's speaking of the Breguet right there. And then Andrew saying, oh no, Tim, that's pretty harsh on FP Journe. I don't 
don't think so. I, I think realistically, everything we say about F.P. Joran on this show is respectful, even if every once in a while I do give a ribbing to the man himself. And then right here, we've got Fjord Prefect asking to see the SACO Daytona. If you're just joining in, I'm going to flash this one more time. The second time around, I'm giving you advance notice. Lower the brightness on your monitor and squint. This watch that came out in 2004 is the most controversial Rolex of all time. Uh, this is a timepiece that puts the Mayer Dial Daytonas to shame in terms of the sheer back and forth that has, it has inspired. That said, it's an honest, handmade, hand-finished Rolex in an era in which those are naturally extinct. They have gone the way of the dinosaur after the comet. This watch, with invisibly set golden sapphires in the bezel, and 48 diamonds in the lugs is unlike anything else Rolex makes today. Not because it's loud, but because it is truly handcrafted. A special watch for a special kind of guy, or gal. This is a timepiece that defies description. I called it a Mardi Gras float for your wrist, and I'm sticking with that. All right, folks, we've got a lot in the box. We've got Tariq joining in from Patchogue, Long Island. Long Island, my old neck of the woods. I've lived in Plainview. I've lived in Coral Place. I was born in Mineola. I've lived in Cold Spring. I've been all. I've lived in Levittown. I've been all over Long Island. I've even spent time on the far end out in the Hamptons. Okay, guys, let's go for a big finish with a big watch. A dream watch, a grail watch, by any standards. This is a timepiece that, frankly, takes my breath away. And I don't say that often because I have seen it all, worn it all, experienced the best. And this still ranks at the very top of my list for finish, innovation, presence, and I'm even going to say under the radar cool, the Langa Zeitwerk Striking. 44.2 millimeters in white gold. This model came out in 2011. The bridge, the time bridge, featuring the jumping hour and the jumping minutes. This is actually part of the movement. The black portions of the dial are black galvanized sterling silver, black polished strikers, and then a gong that runs all the way around the dial. Now, the watch features a chiming system that fires on the quarter. So, it chimes on the quarter as well as, of course, on the hour. This was the first of the striking Zeitwerk timepieces culminating ultimately in the minute repeater. 36 hour manual wind power reserve. Note that it features stop seconds. I'm starting it up again so you can watch it jump and I'm going to show you how it rings in just a moment. I might have disabled the striker. This is what it looks like when it strikes. Right there. Okay, now I'm going to let you hear it when it strikes. And yes, you can activate it to entertain your friends or beguile yourself. Turn it all over. Caliber L0432. This was the second iteration of the movement that debuted back in 2009 on the original Zeitwerk. Now, much of the underlying architecture is carried over here. So we're going to trace the arc of power from the crown. And by the way, the crown of this watch is a tactile experience unique to this watch, winding a Zeitwerk with a spring so large and stiff that it's actually anchored at one end to the main plate. It's a crown wind feel, unlike anything else in the industry. Eyes closed, winding a Zeitwerk, I know exactly what's in my hands. So anyway, here is the train system that conveys through a pocket watch style click and click spring. the power to the mainspring barrel. Note the Geneva-style Maltese cross stopworks, which is itself black polished. It stops the movement when it no longer has enough power to jump the minutes. Now the power first jumps the minutes and then it continues through a pinwheel-like air brake into a second time bridge. Now you'll see there is a locking lever system that allows that power to flow down through the pinwheel that slows down the transmission into the locking lever, and you can see that there's a second anchor with its own jewels, much like a Swiss lever, and it rocks back and forth. You'll note it preloading as the watch gets close to striking, and you might even see it operate as I'm explaining this system. There is then a double third wheel system with a blued hairspring between. The blued hairspring is the Remontoir de Galate. Unlike the straight spring that Jorn uses, this is a hairspring system that then pours that 
burst of power. There you go. You just saw it reset itself and transition the power to the remontoir, ensuring that constant force via that hairspring between the two third wheels travels to the escapement of a balance, a huge balance, by the way, a free sprung balance, by the way, that beats away at 18,000 vibrations per hour. Note not one, but two freehand engraved cocks. The balance cock and the escape wheel cock with a black polished cover for the escape wheel and engine turn perlage in two different sizes on the base plate. Naturally, German silver bridges featuring a nickel copper zinc alloy with a lovely unpolished, uh, I should say, unplated golden hue, and then blued screws as well as black polished screws. You get both. This is a watch for the ages. A grail watch, even by the standards of a guy who works in the industry. The Digital might be my grail, but I can't say anything bad about this watch other than that I don't own it. The Zeitwerk Striking, 145029 in white gold. As I say, see it and make it yours on the watch box. Guys, thank you for joining me. I appreciate everyone who tuned in, got up early, stayed up late, watched in the second or third language. And of course, my peeps from Long Island, triple thanks to you. That includes my mom, by the way. Thank you so much for joining in. Great show. Thanks to you, my crew. You give me the best job in the world. Time out, Tim out, and thank you for logging on.